Okay, so the next part of a research paper after the title that you'll run into is something called the abstract. And the purpose of the abstract is to provide a very short, um, a very short summary of the whole article. So by very short, uh, I mean usually, uh, and again, this is this is largely determined by the requirements of the particular journal that you're submitting the article to. But usually, uh, it's somewhere around 150 to 250 words. So if you if you look at a chunk of text like that, it's if you've done a whole scientific uh, you know study, uh, 150 to 250 words is actually very a very s small amount of space to uh, have to completely summarize everything that you did. So this is the challenge anytime you're doing a summary. A summary is is about uh, removing all the unimportant details. Um, in 150 to 250 words, you really have to trim it down to the bare minimum most important ideas that are necessary uh, to grasp the, what was done and why it was important and uh, what the results were. Um, so the abstract, though, is very useful when you are uh, doing doing uh, research. I would actually say uh, this is mentioned in your book that when you're looking up articles, uh, the first thing that you want to do is look at the title. And you can often discount a lot of articles. You can just say that's not something I'm interested in just based on the title because the title is so descriptive. If you decide that the title looks interesting enough, uh, looks relevant to what you're trying to understand, what you're trying to learn about, uh, then the next thing to read is the abstract. Because in a very small amount of space, you're going to be able to get a really good idea of whether the article is the kind of article that you are looking for. The next section uh, that you'll run into is the introduction. And the way that I like to think about the introduction is that the two main things that you're trying to do here is you're trying to present the problem to the reader and you're trying to present the plan. So we have the problem and we have the plan. By the problem, what I mean is we're talking about why is the study needed? What is it that you're wanting to find out uh, about the world that isn't yet known, and why is that important? Uh, so this could be, uh, you know, this is this is showing the person what your research question is and giving it context so that they understand why it matters. And then the plan is the actual. Um, uh, we could say it's your research research strategy. How are you going to? Uh, try to address this problem. How are you going to try to find out the answer to your question? So, and and this uh, this is given in uh, I'm going to say general terms, at least in relation to the next uh, section we're going to talk about, which is the methods section. What we'll see is the methods section is giving the research strategy, the design, exactly how you're going to do everything in great detail. So this section is just about saying generally how are you going to approach answering this question. This is also the section where you would introduce your hypothesis. So your tentative explanation for what's going on. So you've got this problem or question, uh, the plan or research strategy that you have for addressing that, for answering the question. And your hypothesis for uh, how you think this is working. Uh, you might also include your predictions for what you think you're going to find, especially if uh, you are writing uh, a research proposal. You're going to emphasize uh, that you're making certain predictions uh, and discuss those in greater length because you haven't yet done the research, uh, so you haven't actually gotten your results and seen what you're going to find. Um, surrounding all of this, you want to be um, using uh, past research, past research to, to give context 
to it to uh, support to support it to give um, to give what I'll call a rationale in other words reasons uh, reasoning an argument for why uh, why the problem is important you can pull on past research to show that to say okay these other researchers looked at this thing over here uh, which is related but they didn't answer this particular question or the next thing that we need to know is such and such um, or here are some problems that have been found. You know, here are some statistics showing uh, a real, uh, you know, that uh, certain people are, for example, a certain percentage of the population uh, really suffers from uh, generalized anxiety disorder. And so there's a need for further research on this. You're going to try to present a rationale for what you're doing. You're going to try to show why uh, the research strategy that you're, that you're, um, that you've devised is going to address that and you're going to try to say where your hypothesis is coming from is it based on past research and past theories so sometimes you don't have uh, past research to back up something sometimes you're going to just be honest and say uh, nothing is known about this yet and we are exploring it for the first time and we don't really know what we're going to get so our hypotheses are very tentative uh, or we don't even have a hypothesis because this is just purely exploratory research. That can happen, but almost always there is past research that you can use to give context, support, and reasons for why this is an important problem or question, uh, why you're picking the particular strategy or, or research design that you are, where your hypothesis comes from, why you're making the predictions you're making. You can usually give a lot of context by backing up uh, all your arguments with uh, past research. So this is one of the places where you'll see a great deal of uh, when you do your, your literature review, when you go out and, and search these databases to look up articles, and then you write your own, this is where you will see a lot of citations to past research. So that's something to definitely notice as you're reading other people's articles. Look at how they support what they're doing with past research that came before them because you're going to need to do the same thing in your research proposal and your uh, research report.